Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, our next session uh, for our summit. Uh, this session's uh, title is uh, Synergies of Topath. Um, I'm going to be your moderator. My name is uh, Mayron Borchitz. I just have a couple of housekeeping uh, things I want to go through uh, before we start introducing our speakers and getting right into a wonderful presentation that's been uh, uh, prepared for us for this morning. Uh, this session will be uh, one hour long. We will be in webinar mode, so you will not be able to chat uh, in this mode, and you will also not be able to speak. Uh, please write your questions in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the session is being recorded, uh, so please uh, make a note of that. Uh, these recordings, along with all the other presentations, will be made available on iHeartTrails.org's website following the summit. You can also find these recordings and other recordings um, at the um, Rails to Trails Conservancy's YouTube channel um, today after the event and or later on uh, next week after the summit. Uh, we do have CEUs available uh, for this session. Uh, to obtain these C uh, CEUs for this session, you have to also attend the breakout rooms, and then there will be a link in the chat uh, for a survey uh, that you have to just a quick survey that you have to complete to then uh, receive your CEUs for this session. Uh, please uh, take a minute after this webinar uh, to also please complete uh, the survey. Uh, on this session, tell us what you thought about it, uh, what you learned about it, and uh, if you have any other suggestions. Uh, then we will also have um, a um, conversa uh, conversation breakout session after our, our webinar. So at uh, 10.30, from 10.30 to 11, we'll have a half an hour conversation breakout session where your presenters, moderator, and other staff from Rails of Trails will be available. Um, to have a conversation about the topic you heard this morning. Um, between the two sessions, there will be a five minute break. So between the end of the webinar and the start of a breakout session, there will be a five minute break. So you can refill your coffee or take a restroom break. And then uh, that's all of that. So without any further ado, I would like to present to you our speakers. Um, they'll be speaking in the following order as well. Uh, we have uh, Mira Cardenas, from, she's the Executive Director for Canal Way Partners. Uh, then we'll have Jessica French, she's a, she is a Senior Project Manager with the Cuyahoga County Department of Public Works. And then lastly, but not least, we will have uh, Sean McDermott, who is the Chief Planning and Design Officer with Cleveland Metro Parks. And with that said, uh, Mira, please take us away. Thank you so much, and thank you all for making some time to join us this morning. Um, what we're going to be trying to run through in an hour is a third, what is really a 30 year vision process. Oh, Sean, would you mind backing up? Thank you. <laughs> it's just a little bit of an inspirational uh, picture um, for that realization of what is a generation of work in your next slide. So in putting this together, uh, Sean, Jessica, and I were talking about how uh, we actually are, are folks who took up the vision from the original team that collectively, uh, we don't have 30 years uh, together working on this project, but that that's what this project really is about, is about uh, the relay race. And I'm sure you are, all are experiencing this in your communities as well, of that relay race of carrying forward that vision to a completion. And in this case, we get to be the ones that see it across the line. Um, so we're talking today about the synergies of the towpath trail. So I'm going to start here um, with the general area and the, the basin that we're talking about. In Northeast Ohio, the towpath trail is built on the corridor of the historic Ohio and Erie Canalway, which opened up the transcontinental shipping routes, 
roots in the 1820s, but the canal itself has essentially been defunct since about 1913 and only exists in bits and pieces along the corridor. And today, what you see represented here in the light green is the first 100 miles, which is a national heritage area, the Ohio and Erie Canalway National Heritage Area. And the darker green in the middle there is Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Next slide. So when we think of a towpath trail, traditionally we're thinking of a, of a flat path that we're converting into a multi-use uh, trail system. Next slide. But what we actually had to deal with here in Cuyahoga County and in the city of Cleveland was that the, the towpath trail itself could not be used. In fact, we could not even be on the same side of the river that the canal originally ran. Um, the towpath and the canal were obliterated under a century of um, of additional railroad uses um, and heavy industry. And much of that heavy industry is still in existence today. So this is a, a living industrial landscape. Next slide. So going back to um, where the towpath trail actually started in Ohio and Erie is that there was a visionary superintendent at Cuyahoga Valley National Park, John Debo, um, who championed uh, not only a model mile, not only the first miles, but the first 20 miles of the towpath trail. And um, that was completed around 1993. John tells a story of about uh, how people were practically following the bulldozers as they went through the national park, that the hunger for a trail like this was, was so great. Um, we also had a champion in Congressman Ralph Regula who initiated a process to create a national heritage area, which was designated in 1996. Next slide. So there are two events that really brought the Towpath Trail out of the National Park. And um, the first is a study there on the left called the North Cuyahoga Valley Corridor. And this was really inspirational in that it shifted the thinking of the industrial valley um, to move, uh, the city of Cleveland is very much thinks of things in terms of east and west, and this started to get the city to think of things moving north and south along that river and, and abandoned canal corridor. And then the other event was the creation, the designation of the National Heritage Area in 1996, which started its own planning process. And this management plan was created in, in 2000. And what this did um, for the entire region is create strong advocates for the towpath trail outside the boundaries of the national park with two dedicated nonprofits, the one that I'm part of, uh, Kanawe Partners based in Cleveland and a second nonprofit um, based in Akron. So both these um, groups work under the umbrella of the National Heritage Area to bring the towpath trail um, into reality. Um, next slide. But still, it uh, uh, even with all that great activity, was carrying the moniker of a, of a forgotten valley. This is a fantastic series um, by Plain Dealer, published over 20 years ago. And despite the somewhat forlorn uh, title, this uh, series of articles really heralded the plans to create a greenway through the industrial valley. Next slide. And uh, one of those impetuses that, that moved it out of the National Park was in 1993, um, uh, Cleveland Metro Parks uh, acquired a series of industrial properties, which gave it about 325 acres. But within that was over four miles of canal remains. And of course, uh, the ability to access the, the towpath. Um, that opened in 1999, and I love this picture um, from Steve Litt here on the left, and then a picture taken just last year uh, on the right, which I think really shows the impact that that had. Um, and so this connected the Cuyahoga Valley National Park to a section um, uh, in, on Lower Harvard Avenue. It also inspired some additional planning 
Um, next slide. And that was an alignment study that was completed by Cuyahoga County. Next slide. And this shows some of what that inspired by, by connecting all these different communities um, between the park, between the national park and what became the Ohio and Erie Canalway Reservation in 1999. Next slide. So the towpath trail is often uh, referred to as the spine of what is a, a developing and robust trail system in Cleveland and Cuyahoga County. And so you can see on this map that red um, line is the towpath trail and you can see on the green and kind of umber lines, uh, all the different trails that are spurring off that, that, that Sean will talk about. Um, and so today this system is bringing uh, the towpath trail within a half mile of more than 240,000 residents. Next slide. But before we could bring that into, um, into neighborhoods and out of what is traditionally parkland, we had to figure out how to get from what you see at the bottom of this map, that lowered Harvard Avenue, um, and forge a completely new path through a heavily industrialized area and get the trail uh, to downtown Cleveland. And so Jessica is going to take us through some of the steps and, and challenges that we faced and how we um, divided this project up to make it uh, more palatable. Yes, so as Mira said, um, Metro Parks completed the towpath up to Lower Harvard Avenue, but they needed some help. So the towpath trail extension and alignment and design study that she also mentioned kind of spurred an agreement between many, many parties, the county, uh, city of Cleveland, Metro Parks, National Park Service, uh, our Northeast Ohio area-wide coordinating agency, um, Ohio Department of Transportation. Um, there were a lot of agencies that really felt like this towpath trail was important to go through uh, the industrial valley. Um, and they all made a commitment to building the trail. Uh, later, this partnership agreement was refined um, to four parties. Uh, Cuyahoga County, which ended up being the project manager. Um, they're the ones that contracted the design, construction. Um, they were the contract managers for all of the funding as well. Uh, the city of Cleveland, who are the property owners of the entire project, they're responsible for all capital maintenance in the future. Uh, Cleveland Metro Parks, which is in charge of all of the day-to-day -day operation of the Towpath Trail, and also Canalway Partners. Uh, Canalway Partners is the agency that initiated this entire project. Um, they've been kind of a jack of all trades, if you would say, because they just uh, kind of fill in wherever needed. Um, and they're also just the trail programmers and cheerleaders of the, of the, of the project itself. So this, this agreement established the responsibilities, but it also established a Topat Trail Committee that is responsible for meeting uh, very regularly um, each party has exactly one vote, uh, giving everyone equal say in the project itself and how it turned out. So the alignment and design study also helped the partnership divide, kind of divide and conquer this whole trail project. It's, it's a large trail, very expensive trail and in a um, difficult area. So um, you got to break it down to, to really make this work. So it was broken down into four stages. Uh, stage one goes from Harvard Avenue where Metro Parks completed it to Steel Yard Drive. Um, stage two goes to Steel Yard Drive. It goes through a development called Steel Yard Commons um, and ends right at the beginning of a Tremont neighborhood. Uh, stage three goes through Tremont, uh, the Tremont neighborhood, um, goes through some parks and uh, through a railroad area, uh, an old vacated railroad area. Um, and then stage four takes us all the way downtown to the uh, to what we call the downtown Cleveland Flats. 
Um, these stages intent were intended to be in order um, or completed in order, but because of just obstacles and how money turned out, again, expensive project, we kind of think did things as they came to us because um, we wanted to get the trail complete. So stage two, go to the next slide, was actually the first part to be completed. Um, at the time, there was a development uh, corporation, First Interstate LTD, that was developing the steel yard commons. Um, it was being constructed in an old steel mill site. I think it's that LTV steel yard. Um, and the partnership worked with both First Interstate and Mitch Snyder, um, who then constructed the trail as part of this project. Um, this development is over 130 acres. Uh, it's a pretty large, pretty large development. Um, and they, they donated over $2 million into the trail itself. And this includes, they had a steel heritage center um, that celebrates the industrial history of the community. Um, and this whole trail section opened in 2007. Um, so much earlier than, than the rest of the trail. Uh, so, so we are very thankful to have some private partners on this, on this project. Um, the next section that was completed um, we call the AOC or Scranton Flats project. Um, the, you know, everything aligned somehow and we received lots of money, $9 million worth of money to um, all at once to construct a one mile or two thirds of a mile part of the trail um, down near the river. Um, this was our first guinea pig project where all four partners were involved. Uh, it opened in 2014. It ended up not only creating a trail, but restoring 2,800 feet of natural shoreline, um, created a major fish habitat, uh, which, which you can see by buoys um, if you go along the trail area. Um, and I mean, it was the first, first publicly funded part of this uh, towpath partnership. So it ended up being a really big deal. Um, the next state or the next little section that was funded was um, under the Interbelt Bridge. So this opened in 2016. Um, ODOT constructed or reinstalled the Interbelt Bridge, which is a highway, um, I-90, that connects, uh, connects to downtown Cleveland. It's the main, main source to get into the downtown area. Um, it's one of the largest projects in history. Uh, ODOT usually doesn't create parks. They don't create trails. They don't create anything like that. They are in the business of trails or in the business of road and bridges. Um, so them working with the partners to create a trail underneath the Interbelt Bridge was a big deal. Um, I do think it's because of uh, the partners that were involved and are, you know, we had a several agreements in place, which helped uh, spur them funding, designing and constructing uh, underneath this, underneath the Interbelt Bridge. So the next slide, the, the rest of the stages, though we, we completed all these, but the rest of the stages needed money and not just a little bit of money, a lot of money. I think the original, original amount of money they thought that was needed for this project was 47 million, it ended up being around 54 million. So this is a, this is a big project. Um, it's hard to find that much money with trail projects. So uh, we kind of went to a new project funding source, which is transportation funding. Uh, this is when the towpath went to this uh, source, this was a new type of funding, new, new way to, to fund trails. Um, but we were able to acquire uh, federal CMEC funds, which is congestion mitigation and air quality funding. Um, and that was help, that helped us construct stages one, three, and four. Um, the House and Senate priority funding helped us with the design. And um, we needed a local match of 20% for construction. So we kind of had to make a puzzle piece together. Um, Clean Ohio Trails program donated a lot, a lot of money to, this, to these, I guess, three projects. Clean Ohio Conservation, Ohio EPA, and Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District Stormwater Program. Um, also, the Towpath Trail TIF funding, which the um, Steel Yard Commons and First Interstate LTD was 
part of the TOPATH trail TIF funding. Um, so with all of that, the project was able to be completed. Um, but the thing is, is the funding was only the first obstacle. There were so many other obstacles that were encountered throughout this whole project. Uh, the first being the long process required for federal funding. Um, whenever you receive federal funding, there's federal laws and you're supervised by uh, the Department of Transportation. And remember the Department of Transportation is in road and bridge bridges, not really in the trail. So it was an learning experience for both sides um, because they reviewed everything. Um, they reviewed environmental, all of our environmental studies, just selection of consultants, all of our contracts, right-of-way acquisition, plans and estimates, uh, preparation of our bid proposals, and then also the construction and contracting and inspection of the actual project itself. Um, when you have all this funding, um, it takes much longer than, than uh, different you know, state funding and uh, trail funding that you usually can receive. However, you receive larger chunks of funding, which is which is a big deal in, in these big projects. Um, the next kind of issue that we ran into was the was our environmental issues. Obviously, going through the industrial valley, there was bound to be some environmental obstacles. Um, the towpath was supposed to run through an old uranium plant that uh, ended up manufacturing uranium for the nuclear bomb in World War II. Um, the EPA, U.S. Army Corps was supposed to do an assessment. They did an assessment. It was supposed to be completed first in 2004, then in 2012, and then they delayed it to 2018. Finally, it was completed in 2019. Um, so it was uh, almost 20 years till the actual assessment, you know, was supposed to be completed versus when, or when it was completed versus when it was supposed to be completed. So um, we couldn't wait around for that assessment and then the cleaning of the, of the uh, plants. So we kind of had to maneuver our way around. Um, we ended up going through eight configurations and then 20 sub configurations over those eight configurations um, to figure out a way to, to get through this industrial valley. Um, there were a lot of other environmental issues that we had to work through and a lot of the money in this project is underground to remediate the, the environmental obstacles that and contamination that we experienced. Um, so that was, you know, it was a definite, uh, we knew this was going to happen going through an industrial valley. I think the biggest surprises that we, or at least that the project had was railroad coordination. Um, we all know that railroads are, are um, they take a lot of coordination, um, a lot of time, they have a lot of rules and regulations. Um, that's why we started the railroad coordination three years before we were supposed to go to construction. Um, three years was not enough. It ended up uh, delaying our project quite a bit and we we're still waiting for the final touches um, that uh, the railroad is supposed to construct within uh, their, their right of way areas because we went through uh, two railroad crossings and we needed new pedestrian railroad crossings as well as uh, new striping and um, safety measures within the railroad area. Um, and we're still we're still waiting. I guess there was a strike at one point. Um, there's more than one railroad court, a railroad company that has to coordinate with each other. It just took a lot of time. Um, so three years, not enough we found out uh, very quickly. Um, the last kind of obstacle that was that was pretty major was right away. Um, we went through a lot of area that we had to acquire property. Um, and because we were using federal funding, we had to really uh, go by the, it's called the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Property Acquisition Act of 1970. And it gives you a play-by-play -play on exactly how to do or how to acquire all properties. And we also relocated uh, three residential properties and that is a whole nother set of rules. Um, so it, it takes between six months and 18 months depending on the size of the property and what, what you have to do to that property or how to acquire that property. So um, that kind of put a dent in our schedule as well. So even though we did have obstacles. One, it's, you know, it's almost complete. Um, and two, we had some um, great coordination with other with other agencies just as we were constructing the trail. 
Um, so first is the Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District. They were conducting a project um, near, I mean, adjacent to the Towpath Trail. Um, they were rehabilitating a pump station along the trail. Normally those, those pump stations aren't pretty. So um, the sewer district worked with the partners and created an aesthetically pleasing uh, pump station, aesthetically pleasing fencing. It was beautiful. Um, and they spent a lot more money than, than a normal pump station to ensure that one, it was safe. So no one um, tried to get into it near the trail and two, that it looked nice um, as people were passing it. Uh, the other, another um, uh, agency that uh, we coordinated with was uh, the Housing Association in Cuyahoga County, CMHA. Um, so in Tremont, there used to be the, a traditional uh, low income housing project, uh, but 10 years ago, they uh, just, uh, destroyed all of that, and they ended up building a mixed income housing. Um, and that mixed income housing did not take up as much room. So CMHA donated the rest of the property to us to build the trail and to provide a buffer between um, roadways and, and things like that um, and trail users to provide a safer environment. Um, the other, another coordinating uh, I guess business that we that uh, we worked with was Sean Williams. Um, we bought quite a bit of property. Uh, they they have a headquarters in in down or near downtown Cleveland. Um, we removed the testing site. We rearranged their uh, driveway, and we had to kind of uh, puzzle piece some of their property together. And they worked with us throughout the whole project to uh, ensure that we could we could end up putting the trail. Uh, where we wanted to put it. So um, we really appreciate their coordination. And lastly, private developers. So while the project was being designed and constructed, uh, many developments popped up along the Towpath Trail. You know, they, you build it, they will come. And um, they all worked with our management, uh, our, our partners, and ensured a seamless uh, transition from the trail to their development. Um, so we all worked well together with that. The project is nearly complete, still waiting for a little bit of railroad uh, construction to finish, but overall, other than that, we're, we're, we're there and we're really excited, especially uh, I've worked a, a lot of my career in this, in this trail, so I'm very, very excited. Um, once that railroad's complete, I, there's going to be uh, drinks involved, I guarantee you. Um, but overall, a success and a team effort, um, none, none of this would have happened without any all partners were needed for, for this project. Um, and I'm gonna give it to Sean McDor McDermott from Cleveland Metro Parks. He's gonna talk about uh, additional trails and in the region and how they connect to the towpath. Thanks, Jessica, appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Sean McDermott, Chief Planning Design Officer with the Cleveland Metro Parks. Uh, very excited to be with you this morning, and if you're hearing a little background noise, it's because, uh, wouldn't you know it, just when we're ready to start, uh, we have a crew below us doing some work in the office here, so I'll try and work through it and apologize. Um, <clears throat> as you heard from Mira and Jessica, what the towpath really represents is the spine or main street of uh, the entire trail network in Northeast Ohio, and without the towpath trail, uh, we really wouldn't have that center point of connection, if you will, from which everything develops from. Uh, the towpath and the success we've seen from the project has really spawned uh, several other and many other projects. I'm gonna walk through some of those uh, and then uh, hand it back to Mira with some input on the economic development impact of the towpath trail itself. So I'm gonna give some background on Canal Basin Park, on Heritage Park, and uh, some exciting um, boat docks that we're bringing to the Cuyahoga River. Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail, Irish Town Bend, and then what we internally at the Metro Parks call our Tiger Trails. It's an acronym, Transportation Investment Generating Economic Recovery. Uh, those trails are Red Line Greenway, two connector trails down in the flats, uh, the Whiskey Island Trail, and Wendy Park Bridge. And then finish up with a quick summary on vision for the valley. Uh, so you've seen this map several times pop up in our presentation. And what we're trying to do here is we're showing context. Uh, on the left, we've got the 101 mile towpath trail uh, and related uh, corridor 
Uh, on the right is the section that $54 million effort, collective effort from Harvard Road up to Canal Basin Park. Uh, and that's the culmination, if you will, at Canal Basin Park of the trail itself. So we and several partners have been working on Canal Basin Park. Uh, we're excited to be able to deliver a first stage here in the coming months. Uh, but Canal Basin Park is really a long-term effort uh, to see about 25 acres fully uh, redeveloped into a park setting, something that's deserved and, and beholden of a project such as the Towpath Trail. Uh, <clears throat> the, the area of Canal Basin Park itself really is comprised of many different property owners, uh, many different entities, and like the towpath itself, broken down uh, into stages and smaller projects uh, so that we could uh, be successful and not try and get everything done at once uh, because the funding uh, for the park on the whole has not been established yet and details are still being worked through in terms of uh, land acquisition. So you can see here, we've got uh, Settlers Landing on the Cuyahoga River, uh, another uh, sewer district pump station, which we'll talk about, a uh, city of Cleveland property, uh, what we call Heritage Park 1 and Heritage Park 2 that flank each side of the river across the Center Street Swing Bridge, uh, and then the phase, uh, the stage four trailhead, and that's what we'll jump into in just a moment here. So Canal Basin Park, the entire 25 acres is outlined in red. Um, again, this is a, a future state, if you will, in terms of all the land that's uh, incorporated in the park. We're here looking northeast to give you a perspective and then we'll flip around and look southwest. Uh, but you can see that the location for Canal Basin Park is quite unique and it's set up in this series of rooms um, with these really incredible spaces under the Detroit Superior Viaduct, under the RTA Red Line Viaduct, and that gives a lot of really interesting opportunity uh, to create a very, very unique setting uh, for, you can either look at it as the terminus uh, or the origin of uh, the Towpath Trail. There's been a lot of study on Canal Basin Park over the years. Um, there is a framework plan that guides the working group uh, as we look to implement different pieces and portions uh, of the park itself. Uh, that's not to say that there hasn't already been progress. Uh, Settlers Landing uh, in 2011 was improved. Uh, the sewer district uh, and the great partnership that they provide uh, reconstructed a pump station in 2018. Uh, we're just about ready to kick off some improvements at Heritage Park 1. The city's got plans for Heritage Park 2 and I'll walk you through some of those details here. So first is that sewer district pump station. So like Jessica said, um, the sewer district uh, always goes above and beyond and is a fantastic partner. And when you're talking about Project Clean Lake and doing everything that the sewer district and partners do to improve our local water quality, it just so happens that where we are working in the Cuyahoga Valley is naturally uh, where a lot of infrastructure is to handle uh, a lot of the sewage and combined sewage from uh, the entire uh, central part of the region. So with that, uh, the sewer district designed, constructed, again, a very attractive um, building and structure and site, especially when you compare it to what you specifically or uh, think about comparative uh, pump stations. It's very nice. And not only did they work with the team to build a very nice product, but they also reserved the frontage along the river for a future trail or future connection. And it's that, it's that kind of planning uh, that all the agencies work together on uh, so that we're looking for the long term and not creating issues by constructing one project without thinking of future phases. Uh, so a very good example of how we work together for a good end product. The second is Heritage Park 2. Uh, this is on the west bank of the flats, uh, just close to the Jacobs Pavilion. Uh, that is that tent type, type structure uh, that is on um, the upper side of Heritage Park 2. Um, for any non-Clevelanders on uh, today's webinar, uh, west bank of the flats and this area sees a lot of entertainment, a lot of concerts in the summer. 
so befitting of that, uh, the city of Cleveland and partners have put together plans to improve this section of the riverfront. Uh, and this is a project that is gaining funding and nearing fruition um, in the near future. Cross the river, Heritage Park One. Uh, Cleveland Metro Parks and Partners are working on bringing the first public boat docks to the Cuyahoga River. Uh, we've got a fully funded program uh, through the big grant uh, from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. That's the Boating Infrastructure Grant. Uh, these will be 12 slips uh, for use, uh, day use, and uh, they will be reservable. We're working on a reservation system. Uh, and you can see here that the location to the towpath, to Canal Basin Park, and to all the amenities on the east bank of the flats uh, is really unique. We could probably build 100 slips, um, but we could fit 12, we could afford 12, and we're really looking forward to this project. Uh, we are preparing, we're going through permitting now and preparing to break ground in August, and our goal is to be ready for boating season in 2022. So this is a quick little um, blow up of the slips at uh, Canal Basin Park and Heritage Park too. So Canal Basin Park itself uh, is like we've shown a collection of different parcels, uh, parking lots, former uses, uh, industrial, uh, but we have already taken the first steps uh, in 2016. Uh, we worked with the City of Cleveland and partners to utilize some of that funding that is spun off from the steel yard. Uh, so you, you heard from Jessica talk about stage two of the towpath and how that goes through a shopping center. Uh, that shopping center spins off uh, tax incremental financing payments, if you will, uh, that can then be used for trail construction and park construction related to the towpath trail. So for um, about $190,000, I'm sorry, $290,000, uh, we were able to improve about an acre and a half and turn what was uh, a former liability into an asset. And it is kind of the first clue or indicator that uh, Canal Basin Park is coming. And I'll tell you that we see a lot, Met Metro Parks uh, operates this uh, green space. And we see a lot of activity here. We've really seen the flats in, recent years um, grow, and especially with the residential character uh, that seems to be building uh, in the flats. There's a lot of use here, a lot of people um, needing a break from either being in an apartment or a parking lot. So we have a nice acre and a half green space. We see a lot of dog walking uh, and a lot of just passive, uh, very nice use. <clears throat> with that though, we're still working on um, landing the towpath at an appropriate space. So with stage four uh, now complete, hopefully some of you can join us at the ribbon cutting this afternoon, uh, we are working on the next increment or next phase of Canal Basin Park. Uh, so th those would be the trailhead improvements. Uh, working with City of Cleveland and NOACA, uh, funding is in place uh, to start construction here at the end of summer, early fall. Uh, on this next greening phase of Canal Basin Park uh, so that we can have a proper trailhead uh, with parking, with open space uh, and proper connections. Uh, this work will be done uh, through the fall and next spring. And we're, we are very excited that we're now starting to see the conversion of Canal Basin Park uh, from a Canal Basin parking lot into an actual park. So going back to our contextual maps showing both the big picture of the towpath corridor and also on the right, again, that smaller, uh, more focused map with the uh, terminus or origin in Canal Basin Park of the towpath. One thing that's pretty fitting on the map to the right is uh, you don't see the lake. Um, towpath was designed to end at Canal Basin Park. That is where the Ohio and Erie Canal uh, connected to the river. Um, but at the same time, if you've taken a 101 mile journey uh, from New Philadelphia or Zorro or Dover, um, let's get you all the way to the lake. So uh, we have been working with many partners on the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail. 
uh, the, the trail takes you from the towpath. Uh, and if you can see here on the side, the towpath is on the right. Uh, it takes you from the towpath to the lake. We've got two sections of the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail complete. Uh, we've got the south section. Uh, you heard from Jessica talk about the uh, area of concern, AOC and Scranton Flats. Uh, this photo here shows where the Lake Link Trail and the Towpath Trail converge. So from this point, you can decide to go to Canal Basin Park, or you can decide to go to the lake. And within three weeks, uh, we will be able to get you to the lake. And uh, that is because we will be ready to uh, open the Wendy Park Bridge. So the Lake Link Trail itself, uh, like a mini towpath, was very complicated. Uh, working over and with railroads. Uh, the, bridge, the bridge shown in the picture here uh, spans the Flats Industrial Railroad. Uh, so not only did we have to work with you know, the big four, as they say, uh, but also local railroads as well. Um, also on the north section, uh, because the, the north section and the south section of the completed portions of the Cleveland Foundation, Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail, they have very different feels um, but the north section that runs uh, along the former b &O Railroad right-of-way really snakes its way through this very unique, uh, the old viaduct here that you can see in the photo, and then um, behind many industrial buildings uh, that used to front the railroad. And the interesting thing of what we're seeing is now we're having a lot of property owners who own these industrial buildings completely change their mindset and wanting to open up their buildings to the trail rather to the street that fronts the other side of their building. Uh, we've got some exciting things coming down the pike. So back to our more focused map, um, I wanna talk a bit about Irishtown Bend uh, because Irishtown Bend is and has become the linchpin in completing a seamless all ages and abilities trail network. So. Uh, Irishtown Bend is the outer bank of the Cuyahoga River uh, on, um, on and along West 25th Street. It's the, the, the west bank of the river. And as you can see here, what's highlighted um, on the map is the section of the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail that has not yet been constructed. So we've got the southern portion that connects to the towpath. We've got the northern portion that uh, will bring you up to the lake, but this middle portion has not yet been completed uh, because of matters related to uh, geology and geography. So we are working with the Port of Cleveland uh, and NOACA and Ohio Department of Transportation, uh, the local CDC, Ohio City Incorporated, uh, West Creek, uh, the city of Cleveland, Cuyahoga County, uh, if I'm missing someone, I apologize. There's about 11 plus partners uh, and the effort here, including Canal Way, uh, the, the, the effort here is momentous. Uh, the history here is unique. And what we are effectively trying to do is first stabilize a hillside uh, that is at major risk of um, flowing into or failing into the active uh, marine channel of the Cuyahoga River and disrupting service to a large sector of our economy. Um, and then after that stabilization is complete, seeing that we are giving not even a proper, but really a world-class park environment uh, that has uh, trails, overlooks, uh, passive uses, active uses, uh, the, the partners have come together with a extremely impactful plan uh, that yes, it is expensive, what you're looking at could be anywhere from 90 to 110 million with 40 million needed, uh, 40 million plus for the stabilization of which 27 million has already been secured. Uh, but what Irishtown Bend is and what Irishtown Bend Park represents is really the next wave of connection, the, the next step of seeing the reality of the Cuyahoga River Valley uh, come to fruition. Uh, we are hoping and we are working uh, with our partners, NOACA and Cuyahoga County has also has, has already um, awarded 
uh, nearly $3 million, in fact, over $3 million through the congestion, congestion mitigation and air quality program for this trail connection. Uh, but the trail connection itself cannot be constructed until the stabilization project is done. And like I said, um, looking for sources of funding, a good chunk of it has already been sourced uh, for the stabilization project that uh, we are all working very hard to see come to fruition. So because Irishtown Bend is not yet complete, uh, we needed to work through um, a temporary solution to get uh, users around the um, section of missing trail at Irishtown Bend. So we worked on flat, these flats connectors as part of our Tiger project. Uh, we have um, the connector in front of uh, the uh, Stonebridge apartments. This is down Old Detroit. Uh, Irishtown Bend would be to your left in this photo. So what this connector does is it gets you to that northern portion of the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail, takes you over the Center Street uh, Swing Bridge, back to Columbus Road, and then to that southern portion of the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Trail. So we've in effect developed a workaround, uh, but it is temporary uh, and uh, we are sharing sidewalks, we are partially on street, and again, our goal is to have a full interconnected all ages and abilities network that is off street. So that's why it's one of the many, many reasons Irishtown Bend is so important. But one of the reasons that we were able to achieve the connectors as part of our Tiger project. Next is the Red Line Greenway. Uh, so the Red Line Greenway takes you uh, from that southern portion of the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail, which connects to the towpath. Uh, it takes you nearly two miles uh, alongside of the active RTA red line, which is Cleveland's um, rail that takes you from downtown to our airport. Uh, and in working with uh, our RTA, uh, we were very successful in Cleveland's first parallel trail program, if you will. Um, this project was $6 million and we just opened it uh, a few weeks ago. Um, again, multiple sources of funds, including federal funds from the TIGER program, but also again, uh, our Northeast Ohio Area-Wide Coordinating, Coordinating Agency and congestion mitigation air quality funds were crucial to getting this project done. If you haven't been to the red line, um, take some time go visit. Uh, these pictures would look different today because there would be many, many people using the trail. We've had uh, some great feedback and the connections and connections to neighborhoods that it provides uh, are extremely impactful. And uh, we'd like to replicate this type of setup all throughout Cleveland. Whiskey Island Connector, so now moving to our lakefront, uh, connecting Edgewater Park to Wendy Park. Uh, we had some incredible engineering challenges to overcome here. Um, including working with our partners at Northeast Ohio Regional Sewer District to build a large section of this trail on an elevated uh, precast concrete boardwalk, uh, working over the uh, one of the collector sewers that takes in a lot of the sewage for a major part of the west side of Cleveland. Uh, and we were able to do that uh, because of great partnership and good communication. The picture here you see on the left is a rendering. Uh, if you go out there today, we are 98% complete and the railings uh, will be up by the end of this week. And this trail will be open by June the 24th. Uh, so we're really, really excited. Um, that's not to say it wasn't challenging. We worked with um, the Port of Cleveland along the Cleveland Bulk Terminal to move a fence, work with the Coast Guard Station, work with Homeland Security, um, create something that uh, a lot of people thought couldn't be done in terms of all the obstacles. And um, like I said, this picture looks a little different today because we've now got landscaping in, uh, but we're just about ready to open. And the connection that it represents uh, is truly impactful, just opening up our lakefront. Uh, but we can't complete and open up our lakefront without that connection of the Cleveland Foundation Centennial Lake Link Trail to the lakefront. And that connection is only done by the Wendy Park Bridge. Uh, so Wendy Park Bridge has been talked about for decades, and we are merely weeks away from opening the bridge. Uh, we've got all sections set. Our concrete deck is poured. Uh, we are working on installation of 
uh, all the railings and the accoutrements and our interpretives. So we're, uh, we're very excited, very excited to be at this stage. And um, other than Irish Town Bend, really we think have the key to unlock the entire network so that nearly um, our entire lakefront is accessible, uh, which we also look to replicate on the east side. Uh, and then just a quick small project because nothing can be easy. Uh, in order for us to connect the Lake Link Trail uh, and the Wendy Park Bridge, we've got uh, a little 650 foot section of trail. This is the River Road Connector. Um, we are working out there and we will have this done prior to opening of the bridge so that it's seamless and we're not sending people through a construction zone. But uh, wouldn't you know how difficult it is just to get 650 foot of trail done. Um, things are never easy, but it's fully funded. Um, so what I'd like to close on is the same map uh, that's already been shown with the towpath as the spine. So you can start to see this growing network of trails and the connections to the towpath. We focused primarily on what's happening now um, in uh, Cleveland proper, but there are so many other connections, uh, be it the West Creek Greenway, also our uh, Big Creek Valley connector, our connector to uh, Barfield Park, uh, our Slavic Village connector that we're working with partners on. With the towpath as the spine, trail connections are one thing, but what the towpath also showed us is we have the ability to look at the valley in a whole new way. And uh, City of Cleveland as the lead has been um, with partners, has been working on the vision for the valley that looks at land use, transportation. Um, it is really a master plan uh, for the Cuyahoga River Valley. And I don't think there's any way that uh, we would have been working on this vision for the valley had it not been the towpath and those decades of effort to bring us to this point. Um, and again, very happy today to see the final stage um, cut the ribbon. So I'm gonna hand it back to Mira to talk about some of the economic impacts. Yeah, Sean, I'm just looking at the time. So maybe we just kind of jump down to um, electric gardens. I think many of us are familiar with, um, with the economic development that is generated by these trails projects from tourism and, and healthcare savings and, and all of that. Um, Jessica mentioned this project a little bit and I, I just wanted to reference that this is part of uh, kind of the new development that is taking advantage of its proximity to the towpath trail um, from a former railroad site. This is like a whole new living paradigm um, where they created one bedroom um, apartment. Some of the units are as small as uh, 300 and something square feet. Uh, and because they're using the towpath as that front yard and they're using communal spaces to supplement what would be your, um, your living space. So Sean, you wanna send us to the next one? Um, and this is just a, a picture of, of the towpath mounds, which in and of itself, we think of the trail as, um, as a connector uh, and as a destination. But what we're finding now is that some of these spaces that are created like these mounds are really resonating with the community and becoming a destination um, in and of themselves. So I think we have a few minutes. Uh, if we want to take some questions, there is um, our personal contact information. Um, and I'm not sure if there are any questions for us. Well, thank you very much, everybody. So, um, Sean, since you're driving, there was one question that just popped up. Uh, can you share from and can you share the slide illustration illustrating the impact of the project? It flipped by too fast. Yep, there you go. So these two slides are really showing um, the impact of national heritage areas on um, both our national economy and um, on the local economy. Um, this is a fairly, this is an older study, um, but since one of the major projects is the towpath trail, it can show how even before we had this section completed in Cleveland, what kind of impact that was delivering. And if you go to the next slide, Sean, um, this is actually a Cleveland Metro Parks um, from 2018, their look at the economic benefits of Metro Parks as a whole. This is not just the towpath 
trail. This was a study done um, with uh, Trust for Public Land. And uh, some of the interesting things that I think it does highlight are those property values. We're all aware of the tourism benefit, but looking at what is it adding to the tax rolls? What is that economic benefit that repeats every single year? And then the savings to healthcare spending by having so many people with direct access to green spaces and outdoor recreation. And these are, bo these are both available publicly online. Thank you, Amira. Uh, one more question. I don't know who wants to take this, um, but Aaron asked, have there been discussions with the city of Erie to connect the synergies of the towpath to PA? I don't know if anybody has an answer for them. I'm assuming not. If you do, then uh, I don't know of any of any really specific um, discussions at a regional level. I don't know, Sean or Jessica, if you. I'm not aware of anything specific, and um, I think through Industrial Heartlands Trail and perhaps the Allegheny Passage, if there's if those conversations are in the works, uh, but uh, that's our goal. I mean, it's. It's hard enough to get these local connections done, um, but I think we all want to shoot for the goal of interconnected regions. So let's talk. Uh, then uh, Stephen asked, um, how are you incorporating early history of the canal and railroads? Stephen, I don't know if you can expand a little bit on that or if someone wants to maybe mention how they use the history of the canal and the railroads. Yeah, so Canal Basin Park itself will be a, a green space that where every decision is incorporating the history of the canal into it. It's the only place north of Harvard where we are on the historic towpath. Um, but all, all along uh, the currently constructed towpath, there are nodes that discuss the history of the railroad. When, when we saw that picture of the mounds, um, do you want to go to that picture, Sean? You can see in the lower right corner um, faintly a um, uh, an overlook that overlooks the industrial valley. Um, uh, Metro Parks, with a grant from Coca Cola, created uh, an interpretation of a railroad roundabout that's actually right in front of Electric Gardens. So there are a lot of nodes. We also have. Um, Camp Cleveland, which was a Civil War camp that talks about the history of the, you know, you don't necessarily think of Civil War and Cleveland together, uh, but it it talks about um, the, the troops who were stationed here and trained here, um, but actually created a park. And, and I think sometimes now when we say Camp Cleveland, people think because of the grills and swings, it's it feels like a, like a fun camp, but it has a, 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 a lot of interpretation there with the history. And the finishing choices and the design choices really reflect the history of that site as a Civil War training encampment. So a lot of those, um, I think Sean talked about the design um, really intentional design choices that uh, that reflect that throughout it, throughout the entire project. Throughout the project, there are also various interpretive signage. Um, that was an extensive process itself. And usually um, most trails you see more discussion about birds and native plants. And there are discussions about all of that. However, there's quite a bit of discussion about the industrial valley, about the railroads, um, as well as all of the historical aspects of this trail um, because of just the history of, of where this was put through. So um, the interpretive signs were, were vetted through not just the four partners, but also just the Ohio and Erie Canal Way, uh, the National Park Service as well. Um, helped in that. And then even just the colors of the signs were discussed in detail um, to ensure that, to ensure that, you know, everyone would really, really know what was going on if they walked through the trail and read those signs. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we're just uh, turning the hour here. Uh, just one last question. Uh, is there any boat slipways? Uh, 
power boats. Um, I don't know, there's quite a lot uh, going on around the mouth of the Cuyahoga River, uh, Wendy Park area. Last year, the, uh, the section of the Cuyahoga River was also designated as a state uh, water trail. So there is a hundred mile water trail from Lake Erie, 100 miles up the Cuyahoga River. that was designated as a state water trail last year. Um, the other questions, uh, we'll keep them in the chat here, but uh, we've come to the end of our uh, um, webinar here. I really want to thank uh, our um, speakers today for all the hard work and dedication that you do along the trail. Uh, the, remember, the post session will be starting in a, uh, right now, and then there'll be a five-minute break, so please log in. That login code is in your chat. There's also the post session survey. Um, and the ERU survey that's in your um, chat. Um, and with that, uh, thank you very much to everybody. I really appreciate you uh, coming out and spending an hour of your morning with us on this wonderful talk. Thank you and have a great day. Mm -hmm.